Hey guys, we're about to go into a manager's meeting, so I'm not going to be so engaged in this one right now. But in the next one, I will be. Bobby, what's up, DNH? Hi, how are you? Thank you for joining, guys. Appreciate you being here for sure. Let me get my paper. All right, good afternoon. So, we have uh, Kristen and Leon joining us. All right, so it's fine. So, um, all right, can everyone hear me? Okay, good. So, uh, this is literally a, a quick huddle just to make sure that everyone on this team it is is on the same page about you know what what's what's what our job and our responsibilities are okay mm -hmm. so i want to start off by asking uh and, and you guys can just raise your hands to, to volunteer for the answer what is the responsibility of an agent someone please uh my business share right business to be anybody to write standard every week. Write standard every week. What's that consist of? Now, if, okay, go ahead. What's that consist of? Someone else want to take that ball on? Dialing leads, um, getting in, setting appointments, getting into presentations. Okay. Calling leads, setting appointments, presos. All right. Anthony, did you want to add something? Well, I was going to add that, but then I add door knocking to it. Okay. Okay. Um, so all of the right things. Okay. Now, what, what's, what's the responsibility of, uh, of us? Like what is, what's our, our play in all of this to, Trying you know, to, to get everything we all come to this company for? What is our play? Like what's our role? If you're an essay, what is your role? Train people. Go ahead, Ashley. To teach and inspect and hold accountable. Okay. Teach, inspect, hold who accountable? The trainees. Uh, your agents and yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Good answer. Okay. It's the correct answer. I don't want you to think it's the wrong answer because it's the correct one. Mm -hmm. All right. But the order has to be reversed in who's being held accountable here. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I mean by that is, if if I'm an essay and I train Mario, okay, as a brand new agent, my responsibility is to teach him the script, the system. We all know what go what what the script is, right? We all know what the system is, right? We all have a full understanding of all of that. Is is anyone unclear about that? I guess let me let me ask that. Okay, so. So if part of my job is to inspect that Mario is doing his job, but I'm not doing mine, am I doing my job? No. So if I'm not doing my job, if I'm not, because the first responsibility of an SA and GA is what? Be an agent. Who knows? Be an agent. To do my what? job. To do what? Be an agent. The first responsibility. I have this in all the promotional guidelines. Stuff. No. So if your first responsibility is to keep doing what you were doing as an agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. For, that's your first responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's a, there, there's a reason why the company has the word agent under every contract with this company. Good Every agent. single contract has the word agent in it. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Because you, you have to be reminded you're an agent first, mm -hmm. right? So if I train Mario and I'm supposed to be making sure he's doing his job, but I'm not doing mine, what am I really doing? Mm -hmm. He's not my bitch. I'm not just training him to make money for me. That's not what's going on here. Okay? That's what's happening with That's this group. Okay. If the shoe fits, wear it, guys. If the shoe fits, wear it. Everyone knows where I'm coming at with it, where I'm coming from with all this. Okay? 
We have 67, 72, and almost 80-year-old men and women out working this group right here. What in the fuck is happening? What the hell is happening? Bobby's damn near 80 years old, taking care of her husband who can't do shit for himself. She's at a doctor's appointment for him right now. She's calling more than everyone in this group combined, by the way, combined. She's almost 80. What, what I'm, 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 my mind is blown away. What is going on? Like, what's happening? Right? A couple of weeks ago, we said, all right, look, the leads, they're not picking up, da, 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 all this, that, and the third. I want to show you guys something. So what did I do? My, my Listen, I'm all about solutions. I'm not about talking about the problem for 45 days and then, you know, trying to fix. I'm all about, all right, this is the problem. Here, let's go. Like, what's the solution? Let's let's go. Okay? So we had some issues with leads and all this other stuff. People, not enough people picking up the phone. Blah, blah, blah. All, all, all that stuff, right? I want to show you guys something. This is what I received yesterday. This is what I did as, as a solution to that problem, okay? See this? This is just what came in so far. I ordered more leads. Y'all see this? Y'all see that? Can everyone see this? Okay? I, I just want to point out that this is not about I'm supposed to make investments to help the agency grow. I will always do that, okay? But if I ordered that many freaking resources when the general complaint was not enough people are picking up the phone, we're struggling on the phones, I found a solution to that, but they're not being called. Does anyone else have an issue? Or am I just alone in this? Or I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get clarity here as to what really is happening. Oh, shit. So whatever the reason... Again, if the shoe fits, wear it. Some of this stuff does not apply to any of you guys, okay? Like Mario, he's with his team, crushing, ripping calls, doing pre they're doing their part, okay? Like, I, 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 and I'm isolating Mario from this. I, I feel bad he even has to be a part of this, but it's a team. The team has to get this as a team, if that makes sense, okay? So, so for everyone else, if, if we're not doing our part, what are we really doing? Okay. We, everyone got into leadership and Kristen and Leon, I apologize. This has to be your first leadership meeting. This is not how these things go. Okay. Last time I had to have this kind of conversation was like three years ago, probably Troy, at least would you, would you agree with that? Okay. I, I don't have meetings like this. Okay. But at the end of the day, we cannot have this group right here. This group signed up, signed a contract. Um, we're hiring a lot of people for, for to be trained, and, and, you know, we sold them a dream and this, that, and the third. Do you think it's right for those people to leave their current jobs and leave everything else they have going on in their lives, to devote their life, get a license, invest in this, and, and work on scripts and do present and, and sit in their house and do a, go through all this training, Tyler and LMS, apply for licenses, is it fair to those folks that the team that's supposed to be responsible to teach them how to do the job is not even doing their part? Is that fair to them? No, it's not. Okay? And I can't, I, I can't allow that to go on, guys. Okay? This group right here, this group has to be at the top of every recognition that we have going on every single week, no matter what. Okay? Like I said, Most of us here are in our 30s. Most of us. Most of us are in our 30s. Sylvan is dropping four freaking hours to Pennsylvania to run four appointments yesterday to drive back home. That's eight hours driving. We can't call freaking leads in an air-conditioned house? Like, what in the world? I I'm just at a loss. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. What else can I do to help you guys do your part? This is a, 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 you know, it's, it's a serious question. I just, I just want to know, is there anything else that I myself can do to help you achieve, you know, everything you come here for uh, and help you do your job, do your part? Is there anything else? Anybody? Guys, please open up. It's not, this is, it's open for them. No, nothing anyone says is going to be taken personally. I think every once in a while we just need kind of a bite in the ass like you're giving us right now. 
Okay. So here's the thing, you know, and I'll do it if that's what you want me to do. I don't care. <laughs> it's not that I don't, I don't want to be that person. But at the end of the day, I, I understand. I get it. Sometimes we need that. Someone needs to chew us in our ass sometimes. Someone needs to, you know, uh, chew our ass out sometimes, right? It, it's okay. I, I'll do that if need be. If that's what you need, no big deal. But I think it's just simpler if we all can just do our part in all of this, right? We're, we're letting freaking 80-year-olds beat us and fucking working in our 30s? What the fuck? What is happening? People in their 70s are big carbon. Almost 200 calls yesterday. Right? We're letting people beat us. Who are supposed to be retired? Okay? What's happening? Right? Guys, let's just do our part. It's just simpler. If everyone here does their part, all right? Don't wait for me to do this. Hold each other accountable. Call each other out. All right. So here's what I here's what I need to uh, to happen because because it seems that um, when people are uh, being watched, right? When people are being watched, they they tend to do their part. The first thing that has to happen is nothing else happened. We don't get presentations. We don't get referrals. We don't get anything without making phone calls to the leads, okay? So here's what I need to happen. If you and your hierarchy, okay, each time you guys are booking appointments, I need everyone to do what Mario's doing, okay? Jump on one big Zoom room together, all right? One Zoom room together and just book together. Someone gets a prezo, they leave, they go, they do their thing, and then they come back when they're done. Can everyone commit to that? Okay. Is there anything else anyone needs from me? I don't think that there's a set expectation on if you're going to leave your job. I think it's just me. You know what I mean? I'm not a part of every manager's meeting. You know, I do my thing. But um, I think that there's a false understanding that you can not show up consistently and still hold your role. I agree. I feel like there, there needs to be, I mean, we, we can talk about setting the bar higher, but we, we got to set the floor somewhere too. You know what I mean? Um, it's not, it's, it's uncomfortable answering questions when you have people who are going through the licensing process, going through training, and they're seeing people announced at a certain role or position with the company but they're never being recognized for doing any damn work. I'm not here for friends. I'm here about making bread. You know what I mean? So when I, when you personally recruit somebody and they're coming in and they're seeing that that's the, I don't want to say the culture, but the general understanding is you can just, people say they take the job for the flexibility. There's nothing flexible about American income. There's nothing other, other than other than your paycheck if you don't show up for work day in and day out. That's the bottom line. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, we can talk about 80-year-olds out working us, but I'm watching 24-year-olds and 25-year-olds in other agencies with more wherewithal than, than people who have double the life experience. It's like you got to man the hell up and, you know what I mean, know your contract. Know how you get paid. If you can't break down how you get paid, you're playing this hustle all wrong. You ain't doing enough. You ain't trying enough. You ain't working hard enough. You ain't learning enough. You know what I mean? I showed Sharita how to get onto, uh, what was it? Uh, agency Resource Center to really fully understand her contract and where her money comes from. I'm sure she's probably been on it 20 times since then to get like a general understanding and breakdown. You build your team strong enough until you have six or seven people, and then that's when your floor is just super comfortable. Have six or seven people on your team. You won't make less than $1,500, $2,000 every single week. You know what I mean? But if they're on your team and they're just there because you're just there, you're just tying up a lot of your time every day talking to people who ain't even doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't not write two that not writing two thousand dollars in a week and not working all weekend. That's a you problem. That's not an agency problem. It's, yeah, it's you not an agency problem either. You don't care about going nowhere. You don't care about being nothing. We need a coach. I was working from 11 a.m. until 7.30 at night on Saturday, and they weren't even for me. They weren't even for me. 
but you had off all, all weekend. And they wrote $7,000 in the last three months combined, probably. That's a youth thing. It's not an agency thing. You got to have some heart. You got to have some pride in your pride in your, in your outcome. That's really what it's about. If everybody had pride in their outcome right here on this call, every single person on here would end up with $4,000 every single week. And there goes $50,000 a week. And what everybody else does is just icing on the cake. It has to come on a time when you got to realize is you about it or not. Some of y'all ain't about it. I'm letting you know that now. <laughs> you just, you got you to gotta flick a switch at some point to be about it. Just is what it is. You know what I mean? You, the, the no, it's not even a no need issue. It's just a no work issue. You know what I'm saying? And, and I don't even, our, our, like, our again, ratio is one of the best high as all hell. Hot, one of the highest yeah, ones right around. And again, this, again, the rest of y'all, I don't know you like that. I don't know what you do on a day to day basis. I know the four people I'm looking at now work. I know yesterday people had some things in place with family, personal, moving, what have you. It is what it is. They could be an isolated incident, but we got to, if you know we got those things coming up, we got to work around them to make sure we're getting what we need at the baseline. You know what I mean? And $2,400 a week, I don't think that's too much to ask for. It's not even to ask. That's what we need. Yeah. You just spend $9,000 on some leads. I don't understand how we can't, how we can't turn into two, at least two applications in seven work days. That's just crazy to me. Like, what the hell are you doing? It's like I sit here and call through the pipeline, or I do trainings, or I do the Monday meeting. I sit in the cash money call, and then I work only on Wednesday to do presentations, and it's ending at the top of the agency every week. What are you doing? <laughs> you you had all week to get something done. What are you doing? You know what I mean? It just, um, and again, this ain't me coming at you. It's just, I just know this ain't, this isn't, what I came up on back in the day. You know what I mean? Like if you didn't do 7,000, 6,000, 5,000 a week, nobody, nobody even knew your name. You know what I mean? We're comfortable ending our day early, comfortable starting our day late, comfortable not working all day at all. It's just too comfortable. People too comfortable. Me and Maurice talk about it sometimes. People are just too comfortable. You got to know that you got to know that something is on the line. You got to know that you're about to lose something. And I think when this group of people know that you're about to lose something, if you don't show up, that's when you're going to see the consistency. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. But do what you wish with it. No, that, and that's, that's exactly what's happening here. If we can't do our job, we can't have that position. That's just the bottom line. I'm not threatening anybody, but, you know, we got to, just like Troy said, we, we have to, like, we have to do our part. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You know, my role, my responsibility as the SGA is to make sure – I'm providing a, 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 you know, an agency, you know, with resources and supplies and staff and all, all the stuff that needs to happen behind the scenes and, and development and all this other stuff and, and, and all that stuff, you know. So, so if if there's there's any part of my job I'm not doing, please come to me and say that to me. I'm happy to listen. I'm happy to say, look, you know, I, I'll I'll change. I'll do my part. But everyone on this team, everyone on this bus you know, have to be in the seat they're supposed to be in and play the role of that particular seat. If you're the driver, you need to be the driver. You need to drive the freaking bus. If you're one of the attendants, you need to be the attendant and, and do what the attendant is supposed to do. But everyone has to do their part for this thing to work out. Go ahead, Elise. And one thing, guys, I think that's really important that we're maybe not understanding is you don't have to wait for Sully to say, if you don't do X, you're going to lose your contract. We get paid based on ALP, right? And in leadership, we get paid based on ALP for ourselves and our team. If the agency and the pipeline and the people are not seeing ALP being made by managers, he doesn't have to demote you. You will be, you're not going to have people, like you're not going to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like this is not wait for someone to give you a consequence. The natural order is, will have its own consequence. Naturally, people are not going to come through the pipeline. The bar is going to be lower. People are not going to have this hunger to sell. We talked about this a little bit on Monday, you know, with our management team meeting, where if the management team is not getting after it and creating an excitement to make sales, no one else in the agency is going to be excited to make sales, right? Like, we, we, that, that urgency, that excitement, that, like, hunt, kill, eat, that, that, that's a mentality and if the leadership team doesn't have that mentality, no one else will. So one thing I actually asked Anthony about this like two weeks ago is, 
I'm wondering what's going on because it feels like, and maybe this is not the truth, but it feels like people feel like the SA and GA positions are out of the field positions. The only position that's a, that you work your way out of the field is MGA. Everything before that is an infield position. It's not like, because really at the end of the day, if we truly look in the mirror and evaluate how much income you guys are all making off of your team, it's not much, right? Like half of you guys don't even have a team yet, right? We're, so so we have this mentality of once I'm an essay, I don't, my, my primary responsibility is not to write business anymore. And that could not be further than, from the truth. The MGA contract is where you work your way out of the field. Until then, it's a field position where you write standard or more and you're teaching other people to do the same. It's not meant to be, let me replace the income I would make off writing business with the income I make off my team. That's not, that can't even happen. And there's no one on this call with enough people even to even begin to think that way. Right? So it, you're making money that way in the process of achieving an MGA contract to eventually work your way out of the field. Like Troy said, that was like, there was no, there was no such thing of not like winning the contest, writing the business, getting 4k every week. So people knew that that's the only way everything else works. Right? Because if, if you've never seen me write a policy, and I'm in like you're behind about writing and calling and all this other stuff, and you've never seen me do it as an essay or a GA, are you going to have any respect to listen to me and follow anything I teach you to do? This is not going to happen. But again, leadership establishes culture and culture dictates behavior. So that's why we have to primarily write the business and we got to advertise the heck out of it on GroupMe. Like if you're not advertising it all day long, it doesn't exist. Right? Like, you could write four grand, but half the people are not even showing up for the agency meeting on Monday, so how are they supposed to know? So that's all part of doing it, because like I said, you don't have to wait for Sully to say, oh, if you don't do this, you're going to get this consequence. The consequence is already happening by people not being excited, not sticking through the pipeline, you know, all this, oh, I got to get a second job, all this other stuff. If they're seeing this, like, you know, beast mentality of hunt, kill, eat, we go and we do it, and, it, and we're just doing it through the basics automatically people are going to do the same, but we can't, we got to just, we got to get out of this mindset of once I'm an essay, my, I, I'm not writing business anymore. That that's what, that's why. And here's the deal is creating a very dangerous repercussion in the long run. It's like that echo, right? Like when something goes into the thing and the echo comes back to us from, you know, the atmosphere and the universe, because if the MGA position is a position where you have to write business because the rest of the hierarchy is, is, is so weak. I'll tell you right now, I would not work here if that was the case. Like, I would not have done what I did and made the sacrifices I made for years, rebuilt twice, moved twice, on. none of that would have happened if I felt like the MGA position was a, a, a position I had to write my, uh, business to, to achieve. We made those sacrifices because the MGAs were making 10, 20, 30 grand a month in bonuses. That's what created that excitement to be willing to sacrifice to get there. If people don't see that happening in our agency, one, do you really want an MGA position that you still have to write your own paycheck with ALP? No. So it, it's like breaking down the entire system of how this is supposed to function because the, you know, SA, GA, all of these things, if it's not, you know, if that role is not being held the right way, when you, you're just creating a weak MGA position for if you even get there, it's not even going to be worth it. Like that's where the culture has to be, where this is the culture so that that position stays exciting. And then you guys all can achieve it and you can get to that point where you're earning a very good income out of the field, not like all this swing, like too much inconsistency, you know, like that's the other thing too. If we have consistency, that's what's going to create growth. And if people see that consistency, like that, that's where we got to, you know, understand this is bigger than just, oh, 8,000 on leads. That's, that's huge, right? Who, if, if you guys spent, you, sometimes we got to follow the golden rule, right? That's like the simplest thing. If you spent $9,000 on leads on top of what home office is already charging, how would you feel if no one called those people? Like, yeah, like we gotta be you know we gotta follow that golden rule we can't be in our feelings about it right like that's the, there's leadership is more responsibility not less 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, we got to be real about that and, and have a certain level of respect. And we can't just talk the talk. We got to show it. Like respect is something you show through your actions. It's not just thank you, Suli, and then we're done. And then we don't call, we make 20 calls today, mm-hmm. right? So, so we got to just know what are we really doing this for and what will it really take a lot of times I think we, we're excited about it, but we don't commit to what it actually takes to achieve it. And that's where we got to be real with ourselves. What does, if we really want to be an MGA out of the field, earning your residual income is going to grow exponentially. You know, you're not going to have this pressure to write business all the time. You're going to have the free time, but that cannot happen without sacrifice along the way. What, what world, what, what universe would that happen without sacrificing more on the front end to get more later? That, could, that can't exist anywhere in this world, right? So we just got to be really uh, intentional and understand the impact that actually we're having as a group because we are the agency. We are the agency. We Everything we do, it's not Sully, it's not me, it's not Troy. It's everyone on this call that creates the agency we're looking to have. We all have an equal responsibility in that. So that's the, you know, that's where we got it. And there's a great big return on the other end, but that's where we got to just know that and execute it. And, and you can find, you can do other things and do this. When we first moved to Maryland, I mean, you heard Troy, he's doing at least 2000 one day a week. I was doing in the, I mean, when we first moved here, Troy, did we, were we hanging out every weekend, Friday through Sunday, like shooting the shit. And we were writing four grand Monday through Thursday consistently every week. You can have, uh, no one's saying do nothing else in your life. No one's saying that. But we're just saying when it's time to plug in and work, we got to actually do that so you can afford yourself that free time on the other end. We've been trying to optimize the schedule so that you still have more personal time with family, getting done by six or seven at latest on a Wednesday and a Friday. I was out in North Philly until 1230 in the morning on Fridays for a year. A year. To build a squad. One thing Simon said. I don't want to make phone calls. Yeah, that's it. One thing that Simon said, and this is, I think everyone, maybe if you've heard this, you didn't understand what it meant. You don't get the team that you think you deserve. You get the team you build. You get the team you build, not the team you think you deserve. I thought I deserved it when after rebuilding, building to an MGA team in Philly, building one in Harrisburg, moving to Maryland, having her... I'm like, I deserve this. I already did this shit how many times? I already did the group overview for years and years. I, de- I taught the boot camp before Stella did for years and years. I did that. I, but guess what? That's not how it works. You get the team you build, not the team you think you deserve. We just got to remember that always. All right. All right. Um, you know, that, that's, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys. Let, let's do our part, guys. That's really what all this boils down to. Okay. Leon, Kristen, again, this is not, you know, uh, the way these meetings normally go, just so you guys know, I don't want you to be discouraged about leadership and all this other stuff because it's just amazing. Obviously, I wouldn't be where I am today without the opportunity. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, understand that stepping into leadership, just like Elise mentioned, is more responsibility. Do what you're doing right now, plus a little more. Now, some now you have kids, you know, that sh- that are shadowing you and you're teaching and coaching and mentoring and all this stuff. So let's jump on Brian's uh, uh, quick huddle. Everyone has the link. It's in the group meets. And, uh, uh, you know, let's make sure our agents are on there. I appreciate y'all. Which group me link is that? It's, it's in the group me. Uh, all of them. Let's is it just BG's phone number? Idiot. Dumb motherfucker is an asshole. But he's right. So no matter what happens, guys, you always have to stand your ground and find a way. No matter what, you're just going to find a way. My day is just going. I'm about to jump into like a like another meeting. Yet again, as you heard, our bosses are not pretty happy about the results this week. So we just got to push harder and get the stuff done, guys. It's just been crazy. We got to m- jump into a new meeting again. And sometimes, even when we don't like it, we're just going to... But you took all of us out, I didn't realize you guys were all alone. We literally got to, you know, just <sighs> push through when it comes to shit that goes sour. You know, we just got to push through, guys. Like, it's just the way life is sometimes, you know. Somebody and then jumping we... into another meeting like two minutes later. 
Well, but, literally, like, meetings since, like, know. nine in the morning and nonstop, and we just got to keep pushing, and then other people is talking about different things, and I, like, my mind can't go to all these different places at the same time with all the stuff that's going on, but all I can tell you, see, we're literally about to, yeah, literally about to get started in this new one, and not even two seconds, not even to go to the bathroom, so you already know how that is so let me just go grab the charger thing before they come and get mad of course here you're gonna be on your camera you're gonna be respectful you gotta do everything the way they're asking you to or they're gonna get pissed and the last thing you want after the meeting that we have with this dude is for him to get pissed at us about some other shit so we just gotta run back inside and do you know what we're supposed to do before they yell at us, guys. <sighs> so sit tight. It's going to be a bumpy ride.